Hey guys, what's up? Uh, this is a continuation video of the coil gun, uh, the coil gun rifle. Um, for those of you that are just looking at this video and haven't actually seen the other two videos, um, it's a three-stage portable coil gun rifle that I was working on. Um, I got the first and second stage wound. I couldn't actually get the second stage to fire properly, um, but I did. I, it fired, but it, uh, it it wasn't perfectly matched up, so the efficiency was down. And I never really made videos of it for that reason. Um, and I kind of lost interest and the second coil got ruined. Um, but anyways, this was the first coil. And it's a 9 30 seconds tube and it was designed to shoot quarter inch steel bolts. Like this. With the heads cut off and then the threads cut off and rounded a little bit. Um, to give it like a round tip. Kind of like a... Um, like a 9mm shell or a 22 millimeter shell, um, they've usually got the run of tips. So, um, anyways, this was the basic idea. It was just 10, uh, 10 layers of 18 gauge wire, and I fed 300 volts at, I think it was 1500 microfarads or thereabouts. Um, I can't really remember, it's in my other video. Um, if you guys actually care, you guys can take a look. Um, but that was alright, but there was like nine capacitors to a bank, which really um, didn't help with the whole resistance thing. And those capacitors were old as hell. And they just, they were total shit. I mean, they were old. They didn't even, they weren't even in spec. They were like 300 microfarads under what they were supposed to be. Um, and it actually turned out to be like 30 some percent error um, in the end. Um, and which is not good for what, for something that's rated at, uh, I believe they were. 10%. Anyways, um, this was, uh, it was a nice little coil gun. I shot the thing at about 26 feet per second according to audio, um, um, audio data that I collected. Um, and, I mean, it, it it's alright. But it didn't work like I wanted it to. So, this idea is scrapped in the trash. Um, uh, not literally in the trash, just the idea. Um, we're going to step it up a bit, um, I'm going to redesign the whole thing, um, and I'm going to make a video about every little tiny detail, just for you guys. Um, by the way, the reason it's shitty quality, I should have mentioned this before, but I'm on my webcam, so if you guys have stuck around this long, um, I know it's 240p, or 360 maybe, if we're lucky, um, but, uh, anyways, um, yeah, it's on my webcam, so that's kind of why it's shitty. Um, but we're moving up to an 11.30 seconds barrel, um, and the reason for that is the new projectile is a 5.16 bolt. Um, just to give you a comparison here, it's not a whole lot of size difference, but it definitely looks like it is. So, quarter inch, 5.16. Um, I'm going to cut the heads off and cut the threads off here, make it into a dome tip, just like the old ones, and then it'll slip in. Just like that, and we get 130 seconds clearance, which is uh, as tight as you can get for these brass tubes and the the bolts from Ace Hardware. So um, I'll be slotting these um, and then fitting the coils over them, over the slots, and then super gluing them in place and epoxying them in place. So that way they do not move. Um, the coils will also be super glued every layer. Um, and I got some of this, uh, the cheap 5 minute epoxy. Um, it's 3200 PSI rated, so hopefully that'll be enough to actually uh, hold the coil together and keep it from compressing too much and crushing the tube. Um, now you're thinking, oh, I won't do that, but with it slotted, it just might um, compress it just a little bit and hold, actually catch the projectile um, with it being such a close tolerance. Um, so. Now, anyways, um, uh, I think that's about it for this. Um, it'll be three stages, just like the other one. It'll be SCR switched up until the point where I'm ready to move over to IGBTs with upgrade it with Leia, and then use a microcontroller to actually um, switch the uh, IGBTs on and off uh, to get max efficiency out of it. So. Um, that's about it. Now, for the 
switching, I'll be using photodiodes um, because they're faster. Uh, this one's a photodiode. Here, photodiode, phototransistor. Phototransistor is nice because it's very simple to hook up and use. Just a single op amp, a couple of resistors, or not an op amp, a comparator, a couple of resistors, and you're good to go. This needs extra signal processing because it puts out a lot smaller signal. So uh, it's a little bit more complex because um, I'm going to be using like one or two transistors with the comparator. Um, and then I'll need a fast comparator as well to keep up with the, the photodiode. Um, but it's not really a big deal. Um, and then the infrared emitter is here. So, um, and I'll be actually mounting those on here so I can move them about an inch or so each direction um, to get the best position for timing um, to shoot the uh, to activate the next stage the way I'm going to do that is uh, actually kind of a cool idea I think um, what I'm going to do is I was digging through my boxes my part boxes and I came across these old knobs that I have and they're just potentiometer knobs for um, like they're from Radio Shack so if you lose like a stereo in your knob or something, you go there and you get this dinky ass little thing and you put it on there and you're good to go. Um, and it's cool because they have a set screw right there. They're not press fit, they're actually, they actually have a set screw. Um, and it threads into that little brass piece and holds it on the potentiometer. What I'm going to do is, is drill that brass fitting out. Unfortunately, as much as I have to drill it out, it's going to be pretty much non-existent. Um, so... Anyways, that will then, once I drill all the way through, that will then be able to slide on the barrel. And the infrared transmitter, or emitter, infrared emitter, and photodiode, well then, the set screw is right there. So these will actually be able to set in here like this, and they'll just barely be away from the tube and there'll be slots in the tube where this slides so that way when the projectile goes through uh, the beam is going through the barrel um, through the slot in the barrel once the projectile breaks that it will then send the signal to the signal processing unit um, which then will turn on the SCRs um, which will then like I stated will be switched to IDBTs when I can, um, when I get that far. Uh, but anyways, firing the next stage. Uh, so that's how that's going to work. So, uh, but anyways, in order to make that work, I'll actually have to put epoxy inside where that set screw goes and then uh, drill it out a little bit and screw it back in there to create threads to actually hold it on there. So, and then when I find the, when that, the design is completely finished, and I find the exact spot it needs to be. I'll just epoxy and place it. Ever, ever. Um. Anyways, um. Not sure if I mentioned it or not, but each layer. I think I did. Each layer is going to have epoxy in between it to keep it from compressing. So I'm a super glue. Um. Oh, and also, uh, thicker, uh, thicker acrylic discs, discs for the coil forms too. So um, for the coil ends. Uh, so that'll be nice. Uh, the charger is going to be a uh, beefed up version of uh, Uzer 2K's uh, 50 watt capacitor charger. And um, this right here is the original transformer from the old gun. And this will be, um, everything will be cut off and it'll be cleaned up and I will rewind it with a little bit thicker gauge wire here and a little bit thicker gauge wire here. Um, with not so many turns, I'll be doing about 430 volts um, because the caps will be 450 volts and just for a safety margin I'll do about 430 volts which will still give me more than enough power now um, so that's how that's going to work um, I think that's about it um, now I think I think that's all I got for you guys right now. Um, so basically, right now all I've got um, for right now I'm just gonna try and figure out a way to either I'll either have to cut the discs out with a hole saw 
if that works. Um, or that was really weird. The computer went into like screensaver and it was all like messed up. Um, anyways, uh, I'll leave that to cut them out with like a hole saw. I believe they're called like the, the circular blade, the attachment drill. You got a drill bit and you go and it cuts out a hole. Um, and then use the disc that's created um, and then if that'll work. Either that or I'll have to just order some uh, acrylic discs and just drill a center hole in them. Either way, it's not a big deal. Um, I have to order the wire yet to be able to make the coils because instead of using 18 gauge like I normally do, I'm going to be stepping up and using 16 gauge um, and I'll be only be doing 8 layers. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, well actually that's it. That's, that's all I have. Hope you guys enjoyed the fact that I just wasted almost 12 minutes of your life. By the time I'm done, it'll be 12 minutes. Um, now, as soon as I get another update, as soon as I do anything at all, um, I'll probably make a video of me making these things because I'll do that as soon as I can get my drill charger to work. I sort of broke it. Um, dropped my couch on it. Go figure. Um, but anyways. Uh, as soon as I do something else, I'll make a video. But until then, I have nothing else to show you guys. Nothing else I have. Uh, nothing else to say to you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope I didn't bore you too much. Um, hopefully, you stick around through the entire uh, through the entire build. Uh, comment, uh, like, and subscribe. So peace out, and I will see you guys in the next video.